Okay. Uh, in this case study, we have the obvious uh, suspect when uh, researching uh, informality, and that is political clientelism. If we are talking about uh, the Western Balkans, why is this important for the project? Uh, it is important because it is con uh, connected to governance, to particularism. And uh, that has obviously been uh, a topic that has been addressed so far in many, many now called country reports, previously called progress reports. Uh, maybe we can catch a clue why this change in uh, nomenclature happened. Uh, so, uh, uh, but obviously this uh, area of uh, clientelism is uh, too wide, so we, we are in a process of thinking about narrowing and focusing for the purposes of a case study and uh, researching certain practices that uh, are uh, considered clientelism but uh, uh, are connected to uh, elections uh, and we have titled them uh, uh, vote buying but we also uh, use a broader understanding of what uh, vote buying is mainly that it's not only a direct uh, exchange of uh, money uh, or uh, a material handout, but any trading of uh, influence might uh, uh, do uh, for us. So we, uh, uh, we start from uh, uh, basically one, one of the uh, uh, definition, definitions such, uh, such as this. Uh, aiming to um, actually uh, explore uh, the networks, the brokers, and the durability of these networks uh, connected to uh, vote buying, uh, connected to elections, and how uh, officials g uh, get uh, elected. What is the asymmetry, and how, uh, and 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 one of the key uh, issues here is to explore uh, this a uh, more or less personalized and see whether in the Western Balkans uh, still clientelism is something that is personalized or some other practice which is less personalized, some much more comprehensive mechanisms uh, are developed in terms of uh, reading uh, uh, elections, uh, specifically vote buying. Uh, and uh, of course, this uh, idea of character of transactions, uh, meaning uh, what I've previously said, we are not interested when we are talking about vote buying, uh, simply to uh, <coughs> explore whether someone received money, but uh, how jobs are being uh, distributed, how uh, uh, in general loyalty is being received because of that, and so on. Uh, but also, uh, as is the main purpose of the project is to explore this gap between <laughs> how things should be done and how things are done. Uh, we are uh, uh, trying actually to understand why this uh, clientelism exists. Uh, why is it actually the prevailing mode of uh, doing elections in, uh, in the Western Balkans? And how come uh, we are getting uh, from, uh, let's say, better to worse, actually, in some respects, uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, ele elections. Uh, but also, uh, uh, some, some authors are saying that uh, political party patronage is something that should be expected as uh, and also some other authors in, uh, who write in bureaucracy, they say, of course, we are talking about uh, merit system, but there is always going to be some spoils uh, in, the, in, the, in the system. So we are not going to look into distribution of uh, jobs or appointments on the top level where we are actually uh, uh, seeing uh, uh, what uh, Kopetsky is saying that actually the, the increased level of complexity of governance is also producing uh, uh, patronage uh, 
the decentralization of governance, the privatization of governance is also putting some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, impetus for the political elites to appoint figures uh, uh, in, in, in these uh, agencies. Uh, but we, uh, our guide should be this distinction between universalistic and particularistic uh, outcomes. Uh, it is not so much how people uh, have been appointed, it is uh, more or less, uh, actually it is uh, how overt or how transparent was this, even if it is a spoils based uh, uh, appointment uh, being done when talking about job distribution. But how, how, uh, what was the outcome? Uh, whether this pro produces particularistic uh, or univer universalistic uh, governance and outcomes. And also the main uh, kind of idea of uh, the project is also found in our uh, case study is that actually uh, there is a double-faced nature of clientelism. In some uh, ways it is uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, job, uh, job, uh, para job employment agency, which uh, politi political parties become, is functioning. Is functioning for someone, uh, and uh, we uh, are aiming to uh, explore how well this has been developed. Uh, so main research problems is why does this system remain? What, what I previously said. How does vote buying <coughs> function in practice, which hasn't been actually that much researched uh, previously. Uh, and we are really interested in the, in the really practical mechanisms of how this vote buying is done. One such example is uh, generating uh, uh, voter lists. So every uh, person working in, a, in the uh, administration has to provide 15 votes or 10 votes. And that is really being enforced in practice. Uh, it is being enforced uh, during a campaign <coughs> and it is being enforced on election day. So the political parties have really uh, developed a system of controlling how on election day someone didn't deliver part of their uh, <coughs> votes and this is really interesting to see how this uh, agency let's say uh, uh, is is doing its uh, job who are the brokers and enforcers of the network so uh, what what we termed crowdsourcing uh, clientelism so there is no certain uh, center that is appointing uh, or getting uh, loyalty or uh, assuring loyalty but actually distributing to local uh, uh, brokers to, to enforce the that, that network. And the main question is how the personalized is the network? Is, is the clientelism uh, based on kinship or is it based on party membership or is it based on something else? How, how uh, uh, are these networks, uh, how, how do they look, uh, look uh, in, in, in this respect? Uh, we are, we will, uh, of course, uh, we, we, we have uh, done a literature review. Uh, we are going to uh, use uh, other uh, secondary um, sources, but we are going to uh, also use questions from the survey and uh, field work with uh, uh, with, uh, and that is one, one of the issues that we are still thinking about, whether to actually do ethnography and go into a local community and explore this, or uh, actually to uh, do in-depth uh, 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 interviews with uh, mid-level or if we are lucky high-level politicians that can exp explain to us, or party members, that can explain to us how this works. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, that's it. Uh, how is this important, or what what we 
outcomes of the case study will uh, be useful for. Uh, well, they are going to be useful for the local rule of law policies and implementation. So probably not so much useful for uh, developing new set of rules because basically we are lacking in implementation of those rules. Uh, but we are uh, our case study is probably going to be useful for uh, uh, for the EU in terms of how uh, they measure the uh, success of the of the chain uh, of the change. But also important is how they develop uh, uh, their EU aid in terms of uh, uh, political reforms in the respective countries. So one of the one of the main issues now is uh, in in the civil society community in in the Balkans is uh, how do uh, uh, how do these reforms really uh, produce some results or not? Uh, and uh, the case study of of uh, of political clientelism is going to be aimed at uh, informing you whether they should help, for instance, and how they should help uh, developing capacities for investigation of clientelism, uh, which is, for instance, uh, there, are, there are funds for that, but there are less funds for developing local uh, grassroots uh, resistance toward uh, clientelism. So that's, that's one, one of the topics that we should probably going to be engaging the, uh, the EU about. And that's about it. I, I think I was probably less than 20 minutes.